If you're using something as a means to an end, you're not gonna enjoy yourself. <laughs> It's that simple. If you do something you love to do, you're not in it for the money. You're not in it for the fame. You're not in it for the significance. You're not in it for the paycheck. You're not in it for any of those things. You're in it because you're in it for it. Yeah. You're not using it as you're a means it. to an end. It is the end. And when you do things and you try and do it backhanded and sense. unconsciously or subconsciously trying to get attention for it or get money for it or feel good for it or get love and connection for it or do it to be liked or whatever, you're fucking yourself because now you're spending all of your time using things, using people, using situations so that you can jump over that and reach your significance. Jump over that and reach your money. Jump over that and reach your attention or whatever it is that you're using it as a means to an end for. But the more you do that, the worse you're gonna feel about yourself. And if you do that with a career, you do that with a hobby, you do that with anything, yeah. you're gonna feel like a piece of shit, and rightfully so. It's your body and your mind's way of telling you you're not in it for the right reasons. You are not, because if you were in it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. you wouldn't want the secondary payoff. You wouldn't go to work whether or not you got a paycheck. You wouldn't be checking your bank account every single day saying, did I get enough money? Where are my tips? Where's this? You'd be like, oh, I'm here because I love it. I feel the same way with videography. You could tell. You could no, no, tell. no, 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 no. Not that I do it in itself. Really? Whoa. Yeah, dude. What? Ready? Yeah, yeah buddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, I'm sorry. that concludes episode 70. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed episode number 70 of the Conscious Cast. I'm your host, Cal, along with my other boy, Mr. Jason Scaloro. Shut up, bro. <laughs> Shut up. Hit that button. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode number 70 of the Conscious Cast. I'm your host, Cal, along with my other boy, Mr. Jason Scalora. What's going on, my dude? Not much. Oh, also episode 23 of the Oh, Jason yes, Scalora and show. episode 23 of the Jason Scalora. It's a Scalora. dual episode. <laughs> duh, duh, duh. <laughs> All right, so for those of you that don't know, I Ten fucked minutes. up my leg playing soccer. You buddy. I, yeah, whatever. No broken bones, but I may have torn a ligament in my ankle. But yeah. we'll see. I have to get an MRI. So, something hit me when I was sitting there. Of so, they I couldn't move. I couldn't. I couldn't move my ankle, and I couldn't walk on it. <laughs> they had to take me on the little um, golf cart thing yep. up to the rec center yep. for me to get evaluated by the EMT mm. um, team. And when I'm sitting there, all my teammates, like after the game finished, came back up, and were, they were sitting there with me, waiting around. And a couple of them were like, "Bro, I, how are you so calm right now?" And I was like, mm. it made me feel nice. Like, it was like a nice, nice little ego boost. Yeah. But then it made me, like, reflect. And I was like, you know, me five years ago would be making the most of this, would be fucking, mm. you know, making a scene. Like, oh, my God, my ankle, my ankle. And, like, but now, it, like, it, it's just a, it gave me a sign of, like, what I'm doing is actually working. Mm. Because yeah. if I didn't spend the time and the energy and the effort to try and make my mental health better... Mm. When little shit like hurting your ankle, like, yes, it was a little bit on the extreme side of just getting hurt, but like fucking up your body or being <clears> in a situation where there, there's high stress, yeah. you know, there's a couple of police officers around me, there's EMT around me, they're giving me my vitals, everybody's looking, people, my friends are passing by, and they're asking, oh my God, what happened? What's going on? Yeah. Look at your ankle. It looks like there's a fucking bocce ball in your ankle. Like, you, what's going on? You see that picture? I do have the picture. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I'll, I'll throw it up on the screen. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And like people, like, it wasn't a big deal. Like, yeah. it's an ankle. Like, yeah. it's not a big deal. Like, I'm not dying. And, like, but it didn't take me until the next day for me to calm down. Like, I feel like the repetitions of just constantly being in situations and learning how to handle those situations, whether there's high stress or low stress, being able to just objectively take myself out mm. and be like, look at it for what it actually is. Yeah, I'm like... My thought process is not, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to walk. What's gonna happen? And like, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, it's an ankle. Like, yes, it hurts. I'm gonna get it fixed. I'm gonna get it checked out. I might be on crutches for a couple of weeks, but like, I'll be good. Like, even if it's broken, like, I'll be mm. good. Like, it's a broken ankle, if, if at worst, mm. or a torn ligament, at worst. Like, what's really, why am I gonna flip out? Why, what is there to flip out? Like, logically, we could talk about this as we're sitting here comfortable in a nice room. And logically, other people can sit there and be like, yeah, I wouldn't flip out. But then you would. Like, I, f I know that I you, I would have, the old me would have before mm. I had started working on myself. But it <clears> made me realize, I'm like, this is a signpost of you working on yourself. And it helps, and it helps me in any area of life because I'm just not stressed out. Mm. 
Like, if you look at you, even when you have a lot on your plate, you have to edit a podcast, you have to post your TikToks, yeah. you're making a page, you're, do, you're, you're trying to do your job for rec, you're recording and editing for that. On top of that, you're a full-time student, you're an RA. Like, you have all these things that you're juggling. Mm-hmm. To the outside, you're like, oh, my God. Like, I'm sure Cal's just running around sweating. Like, ah, 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 what mm-hmm. am I going to do? No. Mm-hmm. Like, you're just, you're good. Mm-hmm. Like, you, could, you have a full plate of things that could give you anxiety. But with the amount of work and effort you've put into yourself and your mental health, yeah. it doesn't give you any of those mm-hmm. feelings. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with that too because like outside looking in, it's like people can be like, "Oh my god, like what the fuck?" Like I remember one time I was looking at this uh videographer and this guy like literally uh posts every single day and it's like incredibly high quality content mm-hmm. and it would take me such a long time to do like there's like, and in my mind at the time like out from the outside looking in, I was like, "Oh my god, how does he do this in such a short amount of time? How does he dedicate himself? How does he commit himself to do stuff like that?" And then like kind of like you what, what the thought that I had there, it's just inside looking out that's just how it is for him right yeah that's his own system of beliefs morals philosophies way of life it's just how it's his habits right it's so normal to him it probably feels like nothing to him right Right. and like relating it back to the other uh like you know you injuring your foot and like you know are both of our lives in general and like a lot of people that have busy lives but are able to keep (coughs) um a peaceful foundation it's just just they've been been able to condition themselves and I think it really goes to the root core of like within their minds, right? Their yeah. mental health, right? They've been able to condition themselves to, I think, be very present, concentrated, and mindful of the tasks that they have to do at hand while keeping in mind everything that they have to do, everything else going on within right. their lives, right? right? And I guess specifically relating it to like your type of situation, it's almost as though you don't want the attention, right? Not necessarily you don't want the attention, yeah. but the attention doesn't affect you right. nearly as much anymore. Right. Because I find, like, similar to you, like, I, ha- I had, like, an injury back in, like, seventh grade, and yeah. I remember, like, <laughs> I was walking on crutches, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, in a way, I wanted it to happen, right? right? right. Like, I wanted it to happen right. because it would give me all this attention. Like, oh, my God, Cal, are you okay? Like, all the hot chicks would be like, oh, Cal, yeah, yeah. what happened? I'm yeah. like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep getting hurt. This no, is it's, amazing. It's, it's a fucked mindset to have, right? right? But it just shows that attention is one of the most significant energies that right. human beings thrive off of. And I think I think if you can take away what you what you can take away from this message is if you can thrive without attention on you, right? Yeah. And you can really not be affected when attention is on you, mm-hmm. you will be able to be a very independent person that is able to tackle a lot of tasks that tackle a lot of tasks and handle a lot of difficult situations um, that don't necessarily have to be seen. Right. And I think because like even when I was when I initially got like hurt the other day or like here's a better example. When I walked into the lobby in my building and like people were like, oh, like I I had those good feelings like of like significance. Like, oh, my God, all the eyes are on me, like Mm. all the significance, all this attention. But then, like, afterwards, I didn't feel great about it. Like, I didn't, like, like I felt, like, shitty almost about the fact that, you know, I was getting, like, I was feeling good because of pity. Like, mm. I feel like I, maturing is realizing uh. that attention comes in positive and negative forms. And eventually, when you mature, you realize you don't really want the negative attention. Like, mm. That doesn't mean you mature with your age. I mean, emotionally, because there are plenty of. Yeah. But, but you still <clears throat> feel the pull, right? For that negative attention, it right? still feels yeah. good. So it's almost like you don't know whether it's positive or negative attention until afterwards when you reflect, right? Because looking back afterwards, you know, if I'm making a whole scene to try and get people to look at me, you know, subconsciously or unconsciously, trying to like, you know, exaggerate things and be like, oh my God, I'm so helpless. Please help me. Like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Just trying to get attention. Like, let's say, like, or if if I try and take this injury to the max and get attention for it so that I can feel significant, that's going to feel shitty afterwards. Mm. But if I can, you know, go on a stage in front of 100,000 people and preach a sermon and yeah. change people's lives, that attention is going to feel great in the moment and after. Yeah, but you don't need this, it. These crutches, that attention, if I'm flaring about and trying to you know, feel significant, is going to feel good in the moment. 
but then afterwards, I'm going to feel like a loser. So that's basically, that's basically it. It's like I, f- I feel like when you mature emotionally, you no longer have this strong desire mm. for the pity attention. Yeah. For the fucking shower me with gifts because, you know, woe is me attention. Mm. You want the achievement, accolades, mm. progress attention yeah. that's yeah. positive for you and positive for everybody else. Yeah, And I think I really like that <coughs> distinction you made because you'll still feel that initial pull right. for – like the negative attention, right? And it feels good in the short term, but like you said, in the long term, when that when that attention is not on you, right? You feel shitty. Even even still, like even if you complain all this, right? You get all this attention, right? But yeah, like I said before, it might not even feel good. Like when you when you even offer that, right? And people don't give you that attention that you really want, right? And <clears throat> I I think, like you said, when you mature, right? Mm. And you don't, I, I think, like an extension of what you said. You're in not in, a, in some ways when you're in search, and you I guess kind of want that positive attention, right? You want that recognition yeah. for like the it's accolades, big. the achievements. <clears throat> I find an extension of that is right. So you shift from not wanting that negative attention, right? Now you want that positive attention, right? Yeah. I think when you even mature even farther, and you get to a point where you're only necessarily receiving positive attention, right? I think you don't even necessarily want it, right? I think you just you just do something in itself for itself, right? And then a byproduct of that is is positive, right? And even though like sometimes you might want that positive confirmation, like I feel that all the time, right? When it when it comes to video editing, when it comes to all these different types of things, right? It feels good, you know, like cause mm-hmm. I want I want feedback in order to know I'm on the right path, you know. Right. Um, but I don't necessarily pursue that, right? I don't pursue those comments, like I don't pursue um, making my boss happy, right? Like I don't pursue. I just do stuff to the best of my ability, okay. right? And as like that's the main goal, right? That makes Doing sense. stuff like vid- editing a video <laughs> to the best of its ability, right? right? Or waiting tables to the best of its ability, right. and then a byproduct of that is like, oh, people are really satisfied, people are really happy with the work I'm doing, right? Okay. And as you begin to mature, right, you're not focused on the attention that the that you're. Per- you're not focused on the attention that the activity can give you, right? You're not using the activity as a means to an end. You're doing the activity solely in itself for itself. Right. So it's such, okay. Yeah, so, I know so it's kind of like a. <clears throat> I get. I, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah. To me, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. The yeah. way that it's coming across is, when you mature, your goal shifts from trying to get attention for something mm-hmm. to then doing the thing just for the thing. Yep. Right. So you wait tables. So that you can wait tables to the best of your ability, not so that people will like you, yeah, yeah. not so that you'll make more money, yeah. just so that you can wait tables and be of service in the best way possible. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, nothing else. Yeah. Anything else that comes as a byproduct of that, getting yeah. a raise, getting mm-hmm. attention for it, being the employee of the month for it, yeah. whatever comes as a byproduct of that yeah. comes as a byproduct of that. And it's not that it doesn't feel nice, mm. but the goal was never be employee of the month. Yeah. The goal was never let me feel significant. The roles have flipped. Right. Yeah. When you mature... Your outcome is to do the thing, mm. to do the thing, yeah, yeah. not to do the thing to get attention, to yeah. do the thing to feel s- significant or whatever. Yeah. And I think this this comes into a lot of things with status, right? right. Positioning in society, like how people view you, right? And pe- people like we've touched on this so many times. People just get jobs, right? People just adapt certain characteristics, behaviors yeah. in college, in, in adult life, in childhood, yeah. right? just to be viewed a certain way right right? and they're not actually being able to be themselves right Right. do what they love and just pursue all these things in themselves right so really once you find out who you are right whether this be just authentically right and you start to do what you love right you'll start to do things such as youtube content creation video editing and you won't give a fuck about what anybody says sure it'll be an adjustment right right? definitely no doubt about that but you'll start to do things that you love and the attention the comments, sure, they might affect you temporarily, they'll, right? They'll make you feel yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, like, they'll make you feel good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, they'll make you feel good, right? But you'll just continue on that path, continue doing passions, regardless of what people say, 100%. external factors, and the like. Right, and I think, I think a big important side note on this is, like, when you realize, so, like, right now we're talking about the power of getting attention for things, yeah. right? And it can be good, it can be bad, it can be indifferent. But when you're somebody's friend, like, here, here's a good example. If you come to me... And you complain to me about some problem. If you're my friend and you come to me complaining about a problem yep. that I know you have actual control over 
And it's not that you need somebody to talk to that's different. It's not that, you know, you're coming to me like you need advice or you're coming to me because you need to feel heard because we all need that. But you're just coming to me to complain. If you come to me and complain about shit that I know you have control over and I give you attention for that, mm. I'm fucking you with that. Mm. I'm ruining you with that. Because if you come to me with your yeah. problems and say, oh, woe is me. I'm not to blame. I'm going to point the finger. I don't want to take responsibility. Let me just complain, complain, complain. And I give you attention for that. Say, oh, here's my sympathy. I'm so sorry. And I don't say, you know what, Cal? Like, I love you, bro. Mm. But I got to tell you what you need to hear right yeah. now, which is pick your shit up. Like, stop complaining about it. Yeah. Because if I give you attention for it, give you my sympathy, give you my love and affection for your complaints, then you're being positively reinforced for complaining. Yeah. It's just like Pavlov and his dogs. Yeah. Every time he rings the bell, the dogs salivate. Why? Not because of the bell. Because every time he brings out the food, he brings the bell. The dog salivates. Same thing. Mm. Re repetition, repetition, repetition. But you can do that with complaining. If you complain for your problems, and then people say, oh my God, I'm so sorry. They give you their sympathy. You feel loved and connected and significant for it. Your brain doesn't know the difference between good and bad. All it knows is, Every time I complain, I feel good. Mm. Let's complain more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. And so when you're <clears throat> coming to me, if I'm your real friend, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm not going to give you my sympathy unless you need my sympathy. If what you need is to be told to, hey, cow, I love you, but fucking fix your shit, mm. then what am I doing? I'm not actually your friend. Mm. And so as a friend of whoever... You need to be really cognizant of the fact that if you're giving people attention for certain things, what are you giving them attention for? And what is that going to do to their behavior? Mm. Is that reinforcing something good or reinforcing something bad? Mm. Like if you come to me like, dude, you know what? This has been a grueling process. Like a good example. Every time I hear you like come to me with something of like where you just kind of sent it and you just went for it. And like because that's kind of something that, you know, you feel a little uncomfortable doing. If you don't mind me saying, no, it, like man. just fucking sending it and like getting your foot in the door before having it all figured out. Yeah, yeah. Every time you come to me saying those kinds of things, like when you had that interview with that guy, that videographer, yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I reinforce you like it's your fucking birthday yeah, yeah. because I want you to get that positive, mm. significant feelings of love, of mm. connection, of significance, of, of feeling like I'm the fucking man. Yeah. Every time I hear that, yeah. because I want you to feel reinforced. Like I'm not thinking like, let me pause and reinforce <laughs> yeah, yeah. but like I'm happy for you mm. and I want you to feel good about yourself. Yeah. So I give you that attention. Mm. I maximize it because I want you to do those behaviors over and over again. Mm. But if you come to me with some bullshit, something that's a flaw, something where you fucked up, if you're complaining about something you actually have control over, I'm not going to give you those feelings of, oh, Cal, you know, <sighs> I feel you, man. That's really sad. Like, oh, God, that, that must be really tough, right? And a lot of times people don't realize it. I know I'm on a rant, but like a lot of times people don't realize this as if you come to me with your problems and I give you attention significance for it and i give you the sympathy even though that's not what you need it's what you want it's not what you need i'm doing it because i want you to like me so that's me being selfish because either i don't want to deal with the confrontation of having a difficult conversation of hey cal pick up your shit that's an uncomfortable conversation or two i want to feel liked because if you come to me like 99 percent of people do when they complain and want attention for it and i don't give you that attention i'm risking being liked but I'm risking it for a good reason. Mm. And if you don't do that to your friends, they're not your friends. Mm. That's, you, that's not a good friend. Yeah. You're telling them what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. And I think I fall into that trap a lot too. Like just yesterday, I think I literally did that exact thing. Yeah. Um, and we it's, and it. It, it's tough. Yeah. Because like, <sighs> we all do it. We no, all no, do no. It. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. Cause like when you're in those type of conversations, when <sighs> people just want to be listened to, you right. know, like I get it. I get it, you know, and you're kind of, you kind of, <laughs> there's not many choices in that situation, right? right. And, but I think, yeah, I mean, I would have to think about this scenario a little bit more right. to come up with a concrete but, solution. Uh, so I think I need to emphasize the yeah. fact that if it's your friend, yeah, if it's your friend, like if some, if I'm talking with an acquaintance, somebody that I don't, like, if I know somebody's talking to me and they don't want to be helped, I'm just going to listen. I'm not going to go overtly and give you attention for it because I know like deep down, I'm still trying to help you. I'm not going to give you attention for your problems, for you crying about things that I know you have control over. I'm not, I'm not going to be a dick, yeah, but I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to be like everybody else and be like, oh my God, this is terrible. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to lie to you either. Yeah. Like if you ask for my truth, I'm going to tell you the truth. But 
it doesn't mean you go and tell everybody what they need to hear yeah. because they need yeah. they, they need to hear. No, yeah. no, no. You don't that's really, not what you I don't mean. Have to you don't go you around voicing yeah. your opinion to random people. Yeah. Most of the time, you should if probably they want just, it, they can hear it. Yeah. Right. You should probably just shut up and listen. Yeah. I'm yeah. talking about you as a specific yeah. example, mm. and there's probably like five people that when they come to me with anything and they're complaining, that I can just straight up be like, hey, man, love you, but... This is what you got to hear. Yeah. I don't want to tell you this, but this is what you got to hear. Yeah, yeah. But I completely get what you're saying. Like yeah. Most of the time, you probably should just listen. Yeah, just listen. And just yeah. be able to yeah. hear somebody because a lot of times yeah. people just need to be heard. Yeah, understand, so, yeah, understand yeah. what they want. Yeah. They, yeah. They just, but I think going back to what you were saying, especially in situations like that, um, it, it just goes back to that using your your current situation as a means to get attention, right? And... I like because I was thinking about this too. It's like when my when my boy or like when I'm asking for advice, right? My goal is not to get like my goal is to get the advice, right? My goal that makes is a lot of sense. my goal is to just yeah. hear you out, right? Like mm. my goal is not to just sound smart. My goal is not to like because I'm because when I genuinely okay 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 I just because when I genuinely want advice on something. That is when you're most willing to listen to someone, right? right? And you're open ears, you're most open-minded, and you're most likely to take their opinion and utilize it in a way that affects your own actions and behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So you're most willing, you're not, you don't care about the attention that's on you, right? You don't care about, I'm just trying to figure out a way to like tie this into attention. Like, I I get what you're saying. It almost, it almost seems like you're saying when you want advice, you're here, yeah. and you want the advice. Yeah. There's one line. Yeah. That's all you want is the advice. Yeah. But when you're going to get advice, but behind the advice is the attention, yeah, the yeah. significance. Mm. Let me sound smart. Yeah. Let me look mm. cool. Let me feel like you know I'm trying to do okay. something. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Then you're not going for the advice. You're yeah. going around it. Yeah, exactly. like you don't really care about it. the advice. You're yeah. using it as a means yeah. to an end. Exactly. Right, right, right. Exactly. Now, that, that's probably a lot of people in the self improvement industry, yeah. right? They just they just spew shit out, and it, they're probably like a pretty good speaker, yeah. and it sounds really smart. But what do you know? People see through that type of stuff. Right. You know, when when you said that, it reminded me of something that I've been like dealing with a lot, and I like I haven't really thought about this until mm. very recently. Of a lot of people, like m- way more than I assumed will come to me because, like, I'm the life coach guy, whatever, and they'll ask me for advice, but they just want to complain. Mm. And, like, it's hard because, like, I'm, I'm being tricked. Like, they don't even know that they're tricking me. They don't even know consciously that they just want attention. But they're coming to me like, dude, I need advice. Like, right, I, I, like, I need, like, we need to talk. Like, this is very important. Like, we need to talk right now. And it's, like, the same thing over and over again. I'm like, huh. They don't actually want to change. Mm. They just want to, like, they're masking on the surface of, I'm going to Jason Scalora to talk about my issues, to get advice, to make my life better. When in reality, the only, you could see, you could feel it in the conversation that, like, they're not susceptible to, like, a good example is when I'm having that conversation, they'll always cut me off when I'm actually giving them the advice. (laughs) And they'll just tell me more about the problem. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, huh, maybe they, maybe I just need, like, and I'm sitting there reflecting on myself, like, oh, maybe I should just be a better listener. And then I'm thinking, like, actually, no, like, anytime. I've heard yeah. enough of somebody's story, and immediately I'm like, oh, I have a gem of, of advice. Mm. This is what you should do. This is what I would do in your situation. Yeah. I say it, and immediately they're like, fucking, like, up, like tell me. Like, I want to get better. Yeah. They're like, they're on yeah, the they edge shut of Shut up and listen. They want to know, because they came yeah. to me for advice. Yeah. They don't cut me off. Genuinely for advice, right. yeah. It's not like, not, it's not because it's me and I'm a life coach. I'm 21. It doesn't matter who you're going to. Yeah. If people are asking you for advice and they don't actually take your advice, and every time you try and give them advice, they cut you off or tell you why they can't take that advice or tell you give you excuses for why they can't do X, Y, and Z, they're not actually going to you for advice. They just want to complain about their problems, and that's fine. But in my situation, I don't. I'm not going to tolerate that. The second I find out, like, or like, come to the realization of, oh, they come to me over and over again. They're not changing, and every time I try to give them advice, it doesn't work. I got to stop giving advice because, A, it's devaluing my own opinion. It's devaluing my own word because how is it going to make me feel every time I give the advice and nobody uses it? I'm going to feel like shit. I'm going to feel like that advice doesn't work yeah. when in reality I'm giving it to the wrong people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But two, you're just giving them attention for the problems. Mm. That's all you're doing. Yeah. Every yeah. time they come to you, they feel, oh, you know, you know what? I did a good thing today. I complained about my problems and bitched about them all day. I'm going to do nothing about it. I'm going to go to them tomorrow and do the same exact thing. <laughs> like that's, that's what's going on. <laughs> And if you enable that and you give them the attention and keep giving them the advice, you're reinforcing their shitty behavior. Mm. 
Yeah. And it's wild. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because I keep I keep thinking and it's just it's in the back of my mind. I just keep thinking about the source that is like reinforcing this attention, right? What do you mean by the source? Like you as the life coach, right? If right. you're just if you're just telling them what they want or not as a friend, whatever. Like right. you're just telling them what they want to hear, right? And they like once again, like I, I think I think I've touched on this before, maybe like indirectly, like in this episode, but yeah, I have. It's just like when you when you when you're a life coach, right? Or you're a videographer or whatever, right? And people come to you with uh, their needs. They come to you like for uh, questions or whatever, and they and they have that mindset of that they want they want to be. <laughs> So, no, ever, ever. I'm actually, no, I'm actually like very interested in what you're saying. Um, <laughs> no, my friend Jordy goes, ever, ever. That's so good, actually. Uh, <laughs> Fuck. Um, damn it. You had me like at the end of my seat right there. <laughs> Fuck, you were ripping. God damn it. <laughs> what is a sauces? Wait, no. What's a. Fuck. What's a DJ's favorite sauce? Sauce. Marinara. <laughs> Marinara. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, like what I was saying before, every single time, like you keep saying. We keep talking about people using their positions and um, as a means for attention, right? It, every single time, it just makes me think that those people in those positions, whether it be a life coach, videographer, video editor, mm -hmm. any type of job in particular that get, that they feel that they that they feel of a superior status at that gains them attention and it makes them feel good, right? Egoically, it makes me feel like they don't care about the job at all, right? Be not at all, right. but like for the most part, right? right? Because if they if they genuinely cared, right, it wouldn't be pursued as a means to an end, right? If huh. if they genuinely cared, like I said before, right. they would pursue it in itself for itself, right? right? And it's it's like it's just like when someone asks you, like, oh, why do you do what you love? And people are just like, I do it because I love it, right? Like right. I don't I don't care about what. Anybody says, I don't care about what effects right. it has on me. I just do it because that I love it, so right? And no matter what obstacles they're throwing at you, no matter what challenges you face, you're always going to continue to keep pursuing this, right. right? Regardless of what attention you get, regardless of what status people view you as, right. what position in society people believe you are, right? Like how right. successful you are, right? Like how well you're doing overall right? right you just keep doing it right like just look at my youtube channel like right. my channel is according to you know people like views wise you know i've touched on this example right. so many times my channel is dog shit right? right but i just keep doing it because why right i love it right? right and the same thing with weightlifting videography any of these type of inherent interests yeah that i genuinely love i just keep doing it and i pursue it in itself right. For itself, not as a means to an end, 100%. and I genuinely care about it. It's, it's like if immediately the second you said that, it made me think about the quote that I always hear. It's like, if you didn't get paid for a job, what job would you pick? And it's always like, oh, that's a good idea. And then you think about it like, well, what do I love to do? But you're never like thinking about it. It's like, it's because if you're using something as a means to an end, you're not going to enjoy <laughs> yourself. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's that simple. Yeah. Like, if you do something you love to do, you're not in it for the money. Yeah. You're not in it for the fame. You're not in it for the significance. You're not in it for the paycheck. You're not in it for any of those things. You're in it because you're in it for it, yeah. for whatever it is. Yeah. You're not using it as yeah, a means to it. an end. It is the end. Mm. And when you do things and you try and do do it backhanded it and sense. unconsciously or subconsciously trying to get attention for it or get money for it or feel good for it or get love and connection for it or do it to be liked or whatever, you're fucking yourself. Because now you're spending all of your time using things, using people, using situations so that you can jump over that and reach your significance. Jump over that and reach your money. Jump over that and reach your attention or whatever it is that you're using it as a means to an end for. But the more you do that, the worse you're going to feel about yourself. Like the, the way that I always explain it to people is like imagine if somebody asked you to go out on a 
you know, a lunch date with them or just like, or just go out to lunch with them, right? And, or, yeah. And you don't actually like this person. Like, let's say you ask me to go out to lunch. Hey, Jay, you want to go out to lunch with me? And I don't like you. Like, mm. I, we don't vibe. I'm not going to enjoy my time with lunch for you. I don't want to spend two hours with you. The conversation is going to be boring to me. I don't want to spend time with you. And I'm like, you know what? Are you going to pay for lunch? And you're like, of course, I'll pay for lunch. I'm like, oh, dude, free burrito. Like, let's go. Like, you're going to feel like a piece of shit afterwards. Why? Why? Because I'm not going out to lunch to go out to lunch with you. I'm going out to lunch because you're paying for my food. Right? And so I'm using you as a means to an end. Yeah. Cal is not Cal. I'm not going for Cal. Yeah. I'm going because free food. Right? Mm. And that's what makes Great you point. feel shitty. Great point. And if you do that with a career, you do that with a hobby, you do that with anything, yeah. you're going to feel like a piece of shit. Mm. And rightfully so. It's your body and your mind's way of telling you you're not in it for the right reasons. Mm. You are not. Yeah. Because if you were in it for the right reasons, mm. you wouldn't want the secondary payoff. You wouldn't go to work whether or not you got a paycheck. You wouldn't be checking your bank account every single day saying, did I get enough money? Where are my tips? Where's this? You'd be like, oh, I'm here because I love it. Yeah. And I feel the same way with videography. Yeah. You could tell. Yeah. You could no, no, tell. no, 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 no. Not, not that I do it in itself. Really? Whoa. Yeah, dude. What? Yeah, man. I think I think part of it. See, here's here's where my confusion comes in, right? Because a lot of the times, I feel like I do it as a means to pursue attention, right? Really? Yeah, but like also at the same time too, I love it. Like, but like maybe I like it, but I don't love it. You know okay, what I mean? Do you think that's maybe okay? So so it, it's tough, you know? Like because sometimes. Okay, I get what you're saying, because I feel like that sometimes with like my social media pages. Yeah, and I think that one of the things that I've realized. And I, I just want to know if, like, I'm not saying this to make this about me. I'm saying, I'm just at, like, think about what I'm saying right now yeah, yeah. and then see if this resonates with your situation or not, or not, okay? Because with my TikTok pages, like, I realized there was some, like, especially after I got videos that hit millions of views, what I would start doing was when I would edit content, my, uh, uh, from the, for the first couple months, my only mission was help people. If they're going to watch this, if they're going to read this, if they're going to see this yeah. and hear this, their life is going to be better. Mm. They're going to want to do something with themselves. They're going to make their life better. And that was my only outcome. And it didn't matter how many views I got. But then when I got a video that got so many views, like the melatonin videos I posted, those got like 4 million views each. And I posted them because I wanted people to be aware, like, yeah. oh, there's actually some downfalls of melatonin. Like, this is just a, a physical health sort of thing. Like, I'll just put it out there. Got so many views. And then I realized there was a lot of times where I was going to Andrew Huberman's page trying to get some, you know, scare you tactic, you uh, know, like masking it with personal development, self-improvement, yeah. trying to get people to get views so that I could feel significant. And then I started yeah. feeling shit about doing the TikToks. But I could do the same thing on the surface. It looks the same. Like, I, it could even be good information that could help somebody's life. But I'm doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm. So now I'm not enjoying doing TikTok anymore. Mm. Because I'm now I'm... Pursuing it sometimes for the views and sometimes yeah. to make people's life better. Mm. But if every single I, and I've noticed this over the past couple months, especially once my pages started declining, was okay. The views don't matter anymore because like my page is doing dog shit. So like, all I'm gonna do is try and impact one person's life mm. with this video. And every time I've been posting for the past month, I feel electrified again wow. because all I'm doing is thinking, can I change one person? Yeah. Can I? I know it sounds so corny and so cliche. Like. Can I impact one person's life? Yeah. It's all worth it if that can happen. Yeah. I don't care how many views. I don't care how many likes, shares, comments. What I don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah. Like when I was getting caught up in, I'm trying to post something to get views, to get followers, to meet some end. Then I started hating it. Yeah. Then I didn't start. I didn't love it anymore because mm. I was doing it for the wrong reasons. But I'm still doing it. But in my head, it was. I'm doing this for something else, not because <clears throat> I want to impact people. Yeah. So. I don't know if that's what it's like for you with videography. I just know that when I consciously remind myself mm. every step of the process with the captions, with the editing, with anything, anything at all, yeah. I want somebody to be impacted. I feel way, way, be way better. And it, like it reignites that passion mm. because now I'm realigned with my actual purpose, not aligned with hopefully I can get a million views on this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, totally. It's interesting because like, like I was saying before, I like I genuinely 
like video. I, I love content creation. There's no right. doubt about that. There's there's no doubt in my mind. But I think I think like a lot of times I do get caught up in that trap of like doing it for the views, doing it for the attention, doing it for the things, or doing it for things that I shouldn't be doing it for, right? Mm -hmm. Like the reason I should be doing it is because of like I love videography, right? Like mm -hmm. that's what I should be doing it for. Like and then whatever whatever's a byproduct of that should be a byproduct of us. But I notice a lot of times like I like I like I like that feeling, that initial feeling of like, oh, Cal's the videographer guy, right? Cal's mm -hmm. the video editor guy. Like, I feel like some type of status, some type of, like, positioning, of right? Of and then when, when when I see, like, another videographer come along, when I see, like, another type of video editor, right, that comes along, I feel, like, threatened, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, just like, no, it has to be me, right? Only me, right? Very egoic, right? I think what I have to do is I, I have to dive into this more, but I think I think just consciously reminding myself similar to you, right, of, like, and reevaluating why I got into this area in the first place and why I'm still doing it, right? Because, like, when I'm editing videos, like, I edit them to the best of my abilities, right? Like, I edit them to, I mean, like, I don't, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain I, I do it to the best of my abilities for itself, right? But I think sometimes there are traces of, like, that egoic feeling, right? And I think just, like, yeah, I feel like I partially have traces of that egoic feeling, right? right? And it's tough because at times I feel like I'm pursuing it in itself, right? And I feel this need, this constant gravitation to continue to keep working, right? Mm. But at the same time, too, when I think it comes more to the social media side of things, right? When it comes more to, like, that part, that end of things, right? And sometimes in person, too, when I'm filming and editing, um... There are there are a lot more traces of that, like using it as a means for attention, significance, right. position, status. So it's something I got to look at more deeply yeah. um, and evaluate. But yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, right. but I feel like you also don't you don't start comparing yourself to the people mm. until you accept the attention. Once you accept mm. Cal's a videographer, yeah, then you're in the game. Yeah, if you say, "Hey man, thanks," but like you know, I just do this because I love it. Yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, the, I just feel so much better. Right. Then it's like there's no game, there's no comparison ever at all, and you could be the best or the worst. You're gonna love it the same. Mm -hmm. But once you put yourself in the game of, hey, you know, I get attention for this. This is great. Yeah, I'm Cal, the videographer. Yeah. Then you're fucked mm -hmm. because now you're in the game. Yeah. Now there's a comparison. Now there's a scoreboard. You could choose not to have a scoreboard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. And yeah, that's a great way of looking at it, dude. Like, cause yeah, once you're in the game. That's when the mountain climbing starts, yep. right? You and it's not to say you can't look at others for right. advice. You can't look at others to get better, right? To help set standards. But I think just it just feels so much better when you're just like, "Hey, man, I do this because I love it," right? And nice. and it's not it's not some pursuit that you're using to become a credible, reliable videographer, right? right. But you you become that just by practicing the art over time right? right you don't need to prove that you're credible yeah you're just credible if you're credible it's you know funny what I mean? because the person that doesn't judge the person at the top or the bottom and doesn't throw themselves in the game where there's a scoreboard and significance attached to anything those are the ones that do the best because they're doing it for it they're doing mm. it not as a means to an end not to feel significant they're doing it because they love it and those are the people that are going to be at the top compared yeah. to everybody else because yeah. that's what everybody else is thinking yeah. but in their mind even though they're at the top of everybody else's scoreboard there's no scoreboard yeah they don't even care about the game. There's no game. Yeah. All right, man. Hit that. All Hit right. that one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that has been episode number 70 of the Conscious Cast. I'm your host, Cal. And episode 23. And episode 23. <laughs> and episode 23 oh, of the Conscious Cast. Ooh, got our nice little drone camera. <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Where can they find you, my man? Where can they find you, my man? Cal Bors. It'll be in the bio. <laughs> Jason Scalora. Jason Scalora. Cowboys. <laughs> love yourself because I love you. Stay handsome. And we're clocking out, people. Peace. Peace.